Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Six thirty, um, and so let me just make sure we have everyone. Jack Hardy, Lynn's here, Priscilla Jiggs, Chris Kibbe's here, Molly, Pam, I think is on the board up there. There she, she is. is. Deb Wright is here. Cheryl, Karen. Karen. I don't see Karen here. I don't see her. No. I don't see her. No, no Jeff. Jeff. No, Jeff. No, so. Jeff. And those are the two on the WNE Elementary. They're the Westminster. Yeah. So they're in the Westminster board. So. Mm -hmm. so it being 6 31, <coughs> I'll call the Wyndham Northeast Supervisory Union Board to order. Check the agenda here. So, um, any adjustments to the agenda? Go ahead, Jack. Oh, there you You're on mute. There we go. Uh, yes, I think just uh, to start the meeting off, uh, we have reorganization of the board, but I'd like to put on there um, before communication and public comments, uh, board introduction, because I don't know that everybody knows who everybody is or where they came from or you know anything else they have that they want to say. That makes sense. That sounds out excellent. If, if everyone's in agreement, then we'll go right there. Jack, you want to start us off? Oh, sure. Oh. Um, my name is Jack Breyer. I am hang on. Uh, Jack, Jack. Hang on. Chris Gibby out when I cut him off too fast. So 5G. Boards are compelled to use Robert's Rules of Writer right. by statute. It should say four small boards. Small boards, okay. yeah, that's so, the difference. Yeah. So yeah. 5G, we're just saying it would be adopt Robert's Rules uh, for small, small boards. boards. Actually, Robert's Rules for small boards are within the whole thing. So you can say paying attention to um, the others, but otherwise you don't want to preclude all the rules that are for the other ones. So. I'm, I'm going to beg people's indulgence. Why don't we discuss that when we get to it? Okay. Yeah. So, Jack, you want to start us off with introductions, please? Sure. Hi, my name is Jack Breyer. I live in Grafton, Vermont, and I'm uh, a member of the uh, the WNUESD board and its chair and rep from that board. Do you want to do, do we want to do a popcorn here, Jack, and you call out the next person, or do you want me to call? Sure. Why don't we go with Hardy Merrill? Hardy, you gonna no, mute? I had to unmute myself here. Uh, my name is Hardy Merrill. I'm from Grafton, Vermont. I'm a newbie on the board, and I'm looking forward to my term. And Hardy, do you want to call someone out? Um, how about Elise? Hi, I'm Elise Manning Sterling. I'm on the WNUESD board from Westminster. That's it. All right. How about, I'll just call uh, Pam. Hi, I'm Pamela Johnson Spurlock. I live in Grafton. I am a parent, also of a um, student at Grafton Elementary and a former a graduate of Grafton Elementary. I'm a former WNESU employee and I'm an educator in a nearby district and I'm happy to be on board. Thank you. Oh, and I, uh, can I call on Chris Kivy because he was my former superintendent? <laughs> That's yes, me. I, I'm yeah. Chris Gibby, the former yeah. superintendent, but I'm now a board member for Rockingham. Right. Um, Happy to be back that way, not the other way. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we go with uh, uh, Marcus? What'd you say? Do you just want to introduce yourself, Brenda? Oh, sure. My name's Brenda Farkas, and I'm a 
from Rockingham, and I'm on the Bellows Falls Union High School Board and the WNSU. Okay. And just because you join us, Karen, would you like to introduce yourself real quick? Let me on. Oh. You're on mute. You're on mute. Should get it. <laughs> I don't think she's getting it. No, she's not getting it. <laughs> Oops, Karen, hey, Karen yeah. got to unmute yourself. Very much. Here we go. Um, so I'm Karen Blanchard, and I am a member of the Westminster School Board. Excellent. Thank you. I, I ended up looking up Google for you guys because I didn't know. I didn't know there was a Zoom link not sent out. So there we go. Thank you. All right. Make sure you get it from now on and we get it to you. So, Molly. Molly Bannock, um, Bellows Falls High School School Board Chair. I'm representing the town of Westminster. Cheryl? Uh, Cheryl Charles, Chair of the Westminster School Board. Jigs? Uh, Jim Jigs McAuliffe. Uh, I'm on the Rockingham Board. Mm -hmm. Priscilla? Uh, Priscilla Lambert, I'm the chair of the Rockingham Board and representing them at the SU. I'm also on the high school board, but not representing them. Okay. Lynn Morgan, I'm uh, representing Athens on the WNUESD board. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Deb? Yes, and I, I'm Deb Wright, and I'm representing the Bells Hall Junior High School in Rockingham. And I'm Andy Haas, I'm the superintendent of schools. Um, and David? I'm David Clark. I am a member of the Bellows Falls Union High School Board representing Westminster. However, I'm not a member of the WNESU board. And, and just because it's, he's kind of my right hand man, so I'll call him out. Um, Ricky Adams, who's our <laughs> IT director, and I can't get the camera to go over there, show him. Um, but um, Ricky, Ricky That's makes all this perfect. happen. So um, if you have tech issues, don't call me, call Ricky. <laughs> he seems to walk in the room and it fixes. So, um, <laughs> anyway. did you say that there were, uh, there were two people, two board members? That were that are absent. No, there's only one now. Now there's only oh, one. There's only one. Um, Jeff Carlson. Jeff Carlson, Carlson from the Westminster yeah. Board is not there. Karen um, is from the Westminster. Okay. Board. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And and so just um, before we get into a point of order, just um, and to move on. Um, currently, the WNESU board is a nine-member board, um, but. When there are budgetary issues, the board increases to 12 to include the Westminster um, folks. So um, until July 1, so on July 1st, the board will become a 12 member standing board. So, um, so we'll have that flex back and forth, but just so we kind of talk about that a little bit. So this is 14. I've got 14 people. Yeah, some, yeah but right, but they're not all voting members. So right. Right yeah. now, oh, okay. Elise is in a voting uh, member. And Brenda is in, and David is. And Brenda, is. Brenda is. Brenda is a voting Brenda member. Is. Brenda and you and I are okay. representatives from the high school. Well, he did. We he did not list that because we had nine people without yeah, Brenda Pam, Parks on here. Someone. Pam Spurlock. So it's it's Brenda, not Pam, is the voting member. Oh, I, I thought it was Brenda. Yeah, yes. Brenda's the high school. Is she okay? okay. I, I thought I thought it was Pam too because I had my my notes from the other night. Okay. So. Perfect. So, so who who's who of the fourteen? Okay. So Rockingham Board is is. I know that. I, 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 I get it. I get it here. Cheryl, who are your board members? Present tonight: Karen Blanchard and me. Jeffrey Carlson. Who are your board members? Jeff Carlson isn't here, right? But he is our third member. Okay. Karen Blanchard and me. Jeff Carlson isn't here, right? But he is our third member. Okay. And from the UE board. Yes. Jack. Jack. <laughs> Hardy and Lynn. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And from the high school board, it's Molly, Brenda, and Deb. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Sorry, I got confused. It's okay. <laughs> Pam was here, Brenda wasn't here. Yeah, and then Priscilla and, uh, and Chris. Chris. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. I can't get confused. Mm -hmm. Any communications from the public? 
Yes, sir. Dave Good Clark, part. Westminster. And uh, just a couple of things. And I don't know if the reformer got it wrong. Once it was voted out by Rock Board, the teacher contract became a public document. That's something the board members should understand. But I'm also here on another topic. And uh, what I'm here uh, for is to talk about public accountability and the length that we'll go to to avoid accountability for a mistake. The NESU board lacked a proper form when it voted out the staff bonuses at its February 23rd meeting. The vote personnel and money matters, which affect Westminster School Board. The nine member board, which is BFUHS, Rock, and Union Elementary. Uh, of which five members constitutes a quorum, expands to a 12 member board, including Westminster for a seven member quorum. With only five members in the room, when the vote was taken on those bonuses, a legal quorum was not established. The Rockingham board chair was well aware of this conundrum and made the claim that although a seven member quorum was required, the vote would in fact have to be taken with five members. You can watch her make this comment on the FACT TV link, which is now in your inbox. And then there's the matter of the legal opinion about that quorum, which the Rockingham chair claimed was in hand before the WNESU bonus vote was taken. The claim by the Rockingham chair that a legal opinion had been obtained Westminster was not part of the required quorum was an outright. See that one for yourself on PAC TV. Thank you, uh, Andy. I want to get on with the rest of my business. Thank you, David. It's a pleasure to see everyone. Any other comments from the public? Hearing none, then I'm going to move on to 4A. It's reorganization of the board and election of a chairperson. So we'll entertain motions. Molly. I would like to nominate Jack Breyer as chair. All right. Did you hear that? <laughs> Jack, Molly has nominated you. We just want to make sure you hear, heard that. So, uh, Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Any other nominations? I'd like to, I'd like to nominate Deb Bray. Any other nominations? Hearing none. In Rockingham, we went to a secret ballot. I think it'd be hard to do a secret ballot with the uh, oh, Zoom. <laughs> the Zoom. <Yeah. laughs> we'll close our eyes while you. Yeah, can you guys write a piece of paper and hold it up? <laughs> no, up so I, I, I'm. Because I'm, people on Zoom no. don't get a vote. No, that's no, that's oh, no, no. Yeah, I know. We checked, we checked that one ahead of time. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no but, but we did actually check that. We checked that. We, so checked that, um, yeah. we actually checked that be, because of town meeting, where they they made that comp, they made that um, mm -hmm. that ruling, and so we wanted to make sure we for board meetings we yeah. didn't have that same problem, and so mm -hmm. we actually. The, the yeah. Secretary of State was like, why are you asking? And we're like, because. because. And yeah. then we got that ruling. So um, <laughs> so I, I guess uh, I'm, I'm trying to think what, what is it a, an equitable and fair way um, here? Um, Call it out and have people hold up their hand. Yeah, I guess so. I guess yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. So, and make sure that's a secret. We're not voting on this issue. Yeah. So, Karen, uh, Westminster does not have a vote. Um, during this one, so we'll just be looking at um, so, so those weird. folks. It does. Yeah, I do know that. Thank you. Right. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. All right. So we will start with uh, with the the motion for uh, Jack Breyer. A show of hands. One, two, three, four, five, five, six. six. Don't even need to take the other vote. 
Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, well, we sounds like Mr. Breyer is our... Take the other vote. Oh, we, we have, have to. to take the other vote. We have to take the other vote. You yeah. have to. Uh, I, thought, yeah, I didn't think I thought you need to. The difference is so. going to be what, three? We don't have small board rules yet. Oh, ah, yeah. Okay, so those in favor of uh, Deb Wright for chair? One, two, three with Brian Dunn. So we have six votes for Jack Breyer and three for Deb Wright. Be a long, strange trip. Mr. Breyer, I, I pass the, the gavel on to you, sir, and it's your meeting. Oh, <laughs> board. All right. Um, the uh, under 4B, the next item is uh, election of vice chair. Uh, does does is there any question from anyone as to what a vice chair does? Uh, raise, okay, just want to make sure. Um, then uh, then we're open for nominations. And not hearing any, I'm going to not, I'm going to step out briefly and nominate uh, Molly Bannock. And, and sorry, Jack, you can't maybe see it. Jigs has his hand up. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I really can't see the hands of people in physical attendance. My apologies, Jigs. I was going to vote. Uh, I was going to nominate uh, Deb Wright. All right. So we have two nominations: one for Deb Wright and one for Molly Panic. Are there any others? And I'm going to ask the indulgence of people to speak up because on my screen, the members in attendance are about this high and I can't really tell who they are and what they're saying. Uh, Jack, just so people in the room know, when, when you speak in the room, the cameras will pick you up. So that's how they pick you up. Um, so right now it's just focused on Deb and I, which, you know. I see that. So, yeah. anyway. Weird. <laughs> Because I'm at the end of the room. That's no, because we're talking too much. Why can't you focus on Ricky over the corner? <laughs> okay, I'm going to de declare this out of order, guys. So we've got Molly, <laughs> Brad, we've got Deb Bright. Uh, are there any other nominations? And please speak up. All right, it seems that we have those. Those are our nominations, and I'm going to call the roll. And if because I'm, you know, I can't see everybody. If I miss you. Please say so. Um, uh, Hardy Merrill, what say you? Uh, Deb Wright. All right, one for Deb. Uh, Brenda Farkas, what say you? Molly. One for Molly. And um, see, gosh, I really cannot see who's on the screen. I'm, uh, would people in the room just declare yourselves and 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 state your your preference, because I really, I, I am embarrassed and will try to be there physically from this point forward. Well, who else we got in the you, room? We got, you want me to do a roll call, Jack? Would that be helpful? Well, that would really help me out. Thank you. So um, we, we had um, Brendan Hardy, correct? So uh, Lynn? Um, Molly. Um, Priscilla? Molly. Uh, Jigs? Uh, Deborah. Chris? Molly. Um, Brenda? Oh, she already. Oh, she already. Brenda. Deb. Yeah. Deb? Uh, Deb. Yeah, one, two, three, four. That's seven. Molly. You missed a few Yeah, Molly. Molly? Jake. Molly. Did Jake sit? Did yeah. you go? And Jack. And Jack had voted. Yeah. Jack, who? who, who? I love them Molly? both, but I'm going to vote for Molly. Because he nominated, that makes sense. That's uh, six votes for Molly and, and three for Deb. That's five, five and four, isn't it? But whatever it is, still. Did I get that wrong? Six, I thought it was six, six, six and three. three. Six, six and three. three. Okay. All right. Well, with that, with that concluded, uh, we need to elect a clerk and. I'm not sure everybody knows what the clerk is, so I'm going to preemptively say that the clerk is the person that makes sure that the records are kept properly of these meetings, uh, that they post, that agendas are posted and complete, uh, and that things like uh, Robert's rules are that hopefully the clerk will have that at the ready uh, when when issues come up. Uh, and I'm open to hearing nominations and. 
don't make me pick on you. So if somebody could raise their hand, it'd be really nice. Is there anybody raising their hand uh, in the room there, Andy? Oh, um, yes, yeah, Lynn. I nominate, uh, I'm blanking out, sorry. Priscilla. Priscilla. <laughs> All right, we've got one nomination for Priscilla. Do we have any others? I don't see any here in the room. All right, or then then um, I will entertain a motion to have uh, to have the chair cast one ballot for uh, for Priscilla as Clark. So moved. All right. Uh, next up is election of treasurer. This is board treasurer position, uh, and we, it's not the same thing as members that uh, look at the uh, at the warrants, but I would want that treasurer to to at least do that if that if that's appropriate to do. Uh, Andy, do we have a conflict? Or can the treasurer uh, also um, examine the warrants? Or is that separate? Because I think, is the treasurer's name on the checks? Yeah, people yeah. trying to think. I don't know if it's specific. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I see a hand up from Priscilla. Maybe she has information on this. Yes. Well, we, what has happened in the past is that person is only put on there because we have a regular board clerk that is assigned in that's like usually for like for Rockingham is, is like Kathleen Neha. Do we have a separate one for the SU? Uh, it's a question. I don't know. The yeah. answer to because what we did with Rockingham was we combined clerk and treasurer because we yeah. the treasurer you never use but we may use it at this level. I, Andy, I'm trying to think who the Andy SU would have to board answer that. Jack. Treasurer is for the SU. The the boards that I've served on, a, a person that's doing the warrants cannot sign the checks. And and that's the question. Thank you, uh, Jake. That's uh, very helpful. Bound, so. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. No, I understand that. I, I'm just trying to think who signs the SU checks because I don't know. I don't know. It used to be Rick Hall with that after that. My, name, my just... name used to be on some of that, but I can't remember if it was for the high school or for the SU. Um, that I just, you know, yeah, you, can't you don't look it. at them anymore. So, um, we'll, we, we'll, we will, you know, the more the merrier on warrant signing. So, uh, let's, let's deal with that. I'm, I'm inclined to nominate uh, Deb Wright because, for one thing, she's been nominated twice, and she I, <laughs> I, I, I'd like her to be part of the team. But I'm already a Warren signer. I'd prefer to stay doing that. All right. Well, if then, you don't mind, that's fine. I wanted to make the offer. Um, Jiggs, how about you? You want to be the treasurer? Have your name on the checks. I, mean, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I have no interest in that. No interest in that. Boy, that's a popular thing tonight. Um, let's see. Um, how about you, Brenda? You want to be the uh, treasurer? Oh, there we go. See your face. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> We're getting no, out of practice of a lot. <laughs> I'm still new. <laughs> that after Hardy. a couple of years brenda come on <laughs> hey hardy you're you're, up, you're you're it's gonna be a little hard for you to do warrants but i really want you to do them eventually do you want to be treasurer at least at interim till we can figure this out um i'm doing the warrants for uh you know the grafton uh athens uh, school i don't know that i want to i got uh, quite a bit on my plate boy this is the most popular uh, position it's job. like radioactive tonight I think we need to know how much it's doing. Well, I'll nominate uh, Chris Kibbe. <laughs> I like that. I'm the only one left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there is that also, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. You, know, you can always resign this exalted position. It's kind of like the guy out being ridden out of town on the rail by the sounds of it, you know. Checking with Nicole to just to double check right All now. Right. So. If she gets back to me, we can maybe we can circle back. All right, I'm going. I'm going to um, 
uh, uh, did you accept this exalted position, uh, Chris? I am humbled. <laughs> exaltation. Then, then, I'll, then I will uh, entertain a motion to uh, instruct the chair to uh, cast one ballot for Chris Kibbe as the treasurer of the WNESU board. So moved, Jack. All right. Um, all in favor, just say aye. 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 I hear unanimity. Uh, so Chris, congratulations. Uh, given how popular the treasurer position is, I'm going to ask the board's indulgent and put aside the election of an assistant treasurer for the moment. Okay, table, okay. All right. Uh, oh, so I have to table that from, uh, from Deb. Excuse me? Here. I, did, did I hear a motion for you to table it? That's what I'm, I'm saying. Yes, please. Um, yeah, yeah, I move to right. table it. That's a privileged motion, I believe. So uh, let's just vote on doing that. Uh, boys vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, any negatives? Right. That means well, that means Jeff Carlson could be the assistant because he's not. <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come to that. Now, warrant signers, as it says here, are appointed by the chair. Um, I would really like it if Hardy and Jiggs and Deb would step up to do that, if you don't mind. And if you do, please let me know. I'm fine with it. That's fine. Okay. That, that will make us all happy people. Um, any, right. any two, correct? Pardon me? It's any two. Any two. Oh, right, yeah. any two of the three, but I want to have three people look at, you know, three people, if, if at all possible, I wouldn't mind if all of you signed it. There really is room for a third signature, but we only need two legally. Because I also know some of you have um, have lives, shockingly enough, even though you signed up for school board. <laughs> Item Item G is set time, date, and location of regular monthly meetings. You'll notice that we're meeting uh, on Wednesdays at 6.30. Usually it is, uh, is it the, the fourth Wednesday or third Wednesday of the month. What is this Wednesday? I can never remember. So second and the fourth. The second is your alternative? Thank you. Or your alternate. Um, so uh, anyone have a suggestion as to when they would like to meet, if, if not on the second and fourth at six thirty? Jack. Yes. <clears throat> so I don't have a problem with that, other than um, I'm trying to keep up with town stuff, and it's exactly the same time as the town of Westminster. That's true. So That's there's problem. something going on right now tonight that I'd kind of like to be part of, but my family's split in the middle, and one went one way, one went the other. <laughs> yeah. I get that's part of small town, but I don't know if there's room in the Tuesday. I can't be here. Yeah, no, I, I, she was looking at that, that, but, I mean, Tuesday, but Tuesday, I mean, it's Tuesday the problem Monday. is you guys got Mondays. Rockingham Monday, has Mondays. Well, I don't know when. Schools, Mondays, all tied up. High schools are Mondays. So there is the alternate Thursday, depending on what. So right now on. We're second and fourth. So Thursday. on the first and third Thursday would be the only. I other could do time. the third Thursday, but the fourth Thursday is planning, and I have to do that too. So I would miss a lot on Thursdays so if they were. Yeah. If what about Thursday, the first and what about there. first and Thanks. third Wednesdays? Would that? Is there anybody else doing first and third Wednesday? Does that work, Andy? Yeah, I mean. Well, I don't know what your, you know, how many meetings are going on, and, and I'm not, you don't have to for me. I just want to throw that out there because it does no, kind of no. But 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 true. but if but if Westminster has things on the second and the fourth, the first and the third is open on a Wednesday. So, um, oh, I'd be happy with that if everybody else was. Do we have consensus in the room as to the dates? First and third Wednesday. Um, we're kind of going first and third Wednesday over here, but we've got two suggestions, Jack, out there. Okay. We've got first and third Wednesday, or we've got, what you say, second and first and third First Thursday. and third Thursday. Thursday. And Thursday seem to be a conflict for 
Yeah, two, Chris, and maybe a couple. Oh, others, yeah. So. Okay. So right. maybe it's back to one. So okay. first and third Wednesday. I'm going to entertain a motion that we meet on the first and third Wednesday of the month at 6 30. Uh, is and that, that those meetings shall be carried both in person and virtually at the meeting room at the Bells Falls Union High School, since it does say date and location. Jack, I'll yes. move that, but um, can we also add to that that with the primary one being the third Thursday, third Wednesday? Uh, we said for third, right? with, with that caveat, uh, without objection? Yep. Okay. Sounds like we have something to do on a voice vote. All in favor of having the regularly scheduled monthly meetings to be held on the first and third Wednesday of the month with the primary meeting to be held on the third and the time to be 6.30 and the location to be the meeting room at the Bells Falls Union High School. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? Not hearing any. All right, item number H, 4H. Establish, in this case it states here, Brattleboro Former and the Shopper to be used to announce school board functions and activities. And this is what I would assume would be the SU board act, uh, functions and activities because individual boards may do their own thing. Um, is that sit with people? Is there any amendments to this as written? I have something to say about the shopper. You go right ahead there, Deb. Everyone's using, I mean, the village trustees, like board, the municipalities, and then of course the schools, but the shopper's gotten worse and worse. We did an advertisement for the ARPA funding program, um, that meeting, that public meeting, and they didn't get it in there when it was supposed to get in there. And um, it no, so we never showed up at all and until the following week. Mm. And then the newspaper didn't even show up in my mailbox until the following Monday. So clearly they've got some delivery problems and also some following through on advertising. And I know they're the, the least expensive. I'm just pointing it out there. Unless you get really far ahead of the date you have to post something, we could not fall within the guidelines required. So, um, so other boards have voted to use the shopper and we looked into it, found that exact same thing. So mm. we are going to have a generic posting of basically these are when, this is when the board meetings are like get it in there early so that they're posted yeah. um, and direct people to the website to get the agenda just because otherwise we know that that's not going to happen. And, and, um, yeah. and it is, I want to say for like a business card size, I think Nicole told me it's like 40 bucks. Yeah, it's definitely and, the cheapest. And so we're going to try and post it with all the boards, like figure out a way to do it because otherwise it's 40 bucks to this board, yeah. it's 40 bucks to the mm. high school board, oh, yeah. 40 bucks to the, and, and so we're going to we're try, try and, do, and consolidate it. We're going to try and do one big, and here's the board meetings for this month, mm -hmm. right? Type of thing. And that there's be, no legal requirement to do this, you know. To post them? <laughs> Boy, I wish David Clark had left. Well, yes, yeah. there is. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <a good> <laughs> You're getting hammered here for uh, <laughs> ideas. Oh, listen, he'll catch up with it on Back TV tomorrow. <laughs> you have to warn the meetings correctly. Well, yeah. But you're not required, not required to, to pay put, for posting. Put yeah. something in the newspaper, even. Yeah. No, but some of the special stuff, like annual, do you have to post annual? Well, right. Things like there that. are certain yep. things. And I, there I, are... Mm -hmm. Fellas, ladies, gentlemen, yeah. I, I, we, we haven't got to the point where we're adopting informal rules, and just because it's a little hard for the civilians to make out who's talking, um, could people both identify themselves and wait for one person to finish before the other person, and maybe even occasionally, just for jokes, uh, you know, uh, direct the question to the board uh, chair, if you don't mind. Can I, Jack, may I speak? Yeah. You sure can. Yeah. I already was. So, yeah. <laughs> so there are a couple of times when it's really important to get a posting in uh, to warn an annual meeting, uh, but that doesn't apply to this board. And there are times when you're uh, 
buying or selling property. Right. And those have to be posted, yeah. posted in exactly the right thing. And again, we don't do that with the SD board. So I would suggest that we just establish the reformer, drop the shopper out of this motion that would, uh, and just go with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take that in the form of a motion by member uh, Chris Kibbe. Um Is uh, there a second so we can move on I with know. that? I heard a second from Deb Wright. Um, and uh, is there further discussion? Hearing none, uh, I'll go for a voice vote on the matter. And that would be to establish the Brattleboro Reformer to be used to announce board functions and activities. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Not hearing any, congratulations. That's the deal there. Um, committee assignments. Uh, not everybody is all that eager to be on various committees. Some And some committees are, are uh, oversubscribed. Um, what I would like you all to do is to send me an email to tell me your preference. Uh, I will ask one thing, and that is to, that these committees may be modified somewhat. Budget and finance, and when I, we talk about finance, that's finance across the body of the year. It's not just budget prep, but and it might end up including some long-term financial work. So that's item one on that. Audit, um, the audit committee has been sort of a non-starter for a number of years. I would like with the indulgence of members to have that standing committee be uh, audit and oversight. We've attempted several times to have oversight committees. They've tended to last a couple of meetings and then die. We really need someone to keep an eye on the ball uh, across the body of the year. If there is no objection to those minor shifts, I will send to all of you a description of what these committees do and ask you to sort of one, two, three your preferences and we'll go with that. And by the way, that would include members of uh, the Westminster folks because these include issues of interest to them. And frankly, it would include uh, non-voting members of this board if they are interested in it, we'll send it out to them as well because uh, things like uh, uh, things like a policy are really a, a multi-board committee to a fairly large extent. So with that noted, I'm going Beth? to, yes, uh, Deb? On this list you're asking about is there is there not just to make sure that we're not going to miss no, any date point certain um a date certain on the support staff negotiations have you assigned who's doing that does that have a point thank you for that that's a really uh that's something we should do uh and not in that form because it's not a and, and probably the uh continuous improvement plan team representative do we put in fact put a, a cip member on uh andy from this board i'm i'm don't recall who our CIP member was last year. I don't know who it was last year. I wasn't yep. privy to that. Um, you know, there are, uh, Priscilla has um, sat in on, on, on those meetings and Cheryl, um, and they're on both, you know, other boards. Um, but um, I don't, again, I don't know who was the assigned person from last year. Um, what? Jack? Yes. Um, uh, most of these committees, too, you have uh, representatives to those committees that are assigned by the local boards to well, those committees. Then, so then that's how those are getting on that. there. I appreciate that. Because buildings and grounds is it kind of a, in particular, is sort of a, uh, it, there are, there are committees for uh, buildings and grounds issues across uh, each district. But in this case, the building and grounds that this committee, the SU manages is the, uh, is the building where the SU offices are housed. I don't think it's anything other than that. 
Uh, that committee, in fact, selected the current facility that we're in um, two years ago almost. Molly, you, you may recall how that process went because I think you chaired that committee. That's correct. Right. So, so, so as I say, the policy is the one that is that's that spans all boards, but uh, I think everything else are separate. And the teacher and support staff negotiations issue uh, is completely correct. Um, we do appoint a member to that because it's a uh, it's a multi is a multi district uh, negotiations committee. And I will note for the record, we've been asked to not do a lot of changes as we're doing these negotiations, even though we've concluded with the teachers. And in the spirit of that, um, Deb, I don't know if you're up for more punishment, but since you were on the board uh, on that on that committee, would you mind uh, rejoining as the uh, representative for this uh, for this uh, board? No one else has a burning desire to do so. Well, I didn't say burning sure. desire. I, I just meant, can I drag you to the meetings? Yes, you could do that, yeah. <laughs> yes, I throw my association pyre. I'm good. Okay, congratulations. You and uh, you and um, uh, Chris Kibbe have both uh, uh, been drafted semi against your will. All right. Um, 5G uh adopt Robert's Rules of Order for Small Boards. Ooh. All right. Now the chair is going to note something interesting and you take it for what it's worth. The traditionally Robert's Rules for Small Boards are, are for boards under 10. When we have our full, we've adopted it despite having uh, boards as large as 12, or even 16 in the past, but I'm not sure that we're really supposed to if you're being strict about it, but I'm still open to having it be Robert's Rules for small boards, except whenever I decide we need a little more order and ask you to go back to the formal rules. Um, Jack? How do you Jack? want to go? Jack? Yes. In, in the current 12th edition of Robert's Rules, it's members of boards that are 12 and under, awesome. or small boards. Thank you, that's changed and noted and that actually makes it easy. <laughs> All right, uh, I, hear, I did hear a motion, but I'm not sure from whom to adopt Robert's Rules for small boards. It's from uh, James McAuliffe. Awesome, James, uh, thank you for that. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, call the question. All in favor, say aye. 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 Excellent. So we are working with Robert's Rules of Order for Small Boards. Um, just as a side note, uh, as chair of the uh, Union Elementary, United Elementary Board, we're, at, we're going to be getting copies of Robert's Rules, the electronic version to all members, and uh, hopefully also the uh, uh, the state, uh, the compendium of state laws affecting um, affecting schools. And uh, unless there is an objection, and I there might be because it's we're spending you know, fifty bucks. Uh, I want to try to make sure everybody has a copy of that. Is that acceptable to everyone? Looks like I've got a, yes. looks yes. like I've got a <laughs> dot. This is very informal. So then we've got we've got a uh, sense of the board that that would be uh, that we get those to you all. All right. Item six: review and approve board minutes of fill in the blank. The last meeting that we had. What was the date of that? And do we have those minutes for everybody's? Has everybody had a chance to look at them? I never I've saw seen them. them. I, I don't think any came out, Jack. So, okay, yes, I, I, I was looking, scratching around for those and didn't see them myself. So let's, I, I'm going to move that we put that aside. I, I apologize, Jack. We just have the template that we were using and just running through it without deleting things because. All right. Um, Here, this, right. Okay. 
Uh, I, I'm going to, uh, does the superintendent have a report tonight? And you might be doing this just to keep, catch people up on what we're, what's been going on since uh, we met last met. Uh, I, I, there are a couple of things I'd like to just update the board on and not a, a full formal report, if that's okay. Sure. Um, so just uh, real briefly, uh, we're going to be coming out with um, some new protocols around um, COVID with uh, if a student is symptomatic in the building. Um, and so that'll be coming out. We, we were anticipated to have it out yesterday, um, but it's still um, just getting wordsmithed right now. Um, so that should be coming up uh, this week though. Um, and that'll just explain to parents, like I said, if a student is asymptomatic, just the steps the nurses will take um, to kind of go through that. Um, and then um, just uh, earlier today, just before, um, uh, well, two things. Um, so earlier today, um, I had a pleasure of attending the outstanding, the Vermont Outstanding Teachers Day, um, where two of our educators were um, acknowledged, um, and that was Julie Sines, who's a special educator um, at the middle school, and Mary Lou Masuko, who's an art teacher at the middle school. Um, there were a, a ton of outstanding teachers recognized. Um, it was virtual, but it was just great to see that, so um, just to make the board aware. Um, also, um, just after that, um, we attended the uh, um, unveiling of the banner for the uh, Bellows Falls High School um, State Championship. Um, so that was a, a lot of a lot of fun just to see a lot of community out there and the, and the boys, um, you know, being celebrated. Um, also, um, wanted to announce um, that we um, have come to an agreement for a business manager. Um, and um, James Vazina um, is the gentleman. Uh, he'll be our new business manager. He is currently finishing up as the business manager for Hartford School District. Um, and um, so he's going to be joining us um, officially uh, May 1st, uh, just as he closes up shop there. Um, but we are working with him. He's been, he's already been talking with our consultants um, and with our business office. And so um, we're working out some things uh, so that May 1st isn't a, like a, a cold start. So he's, he's been, you know, and um, it's been, to be, to be very honest with you, it's been great because after we were able to just talk and come to an agreement, it was like that day he was already talking to people. So I, I'm, I'm really thankful that Jim is coming on board. Um, he's been up in Hartford for over 10 years, um, many, many years of experience as a business manager uh, between New Hampshire and, and Vermont. So um, how do you spell that? V-E-Z-I-N-A. Oops, I only got one minute left. Would you spell, <laughs> Would you spell that one more time, please? V-E-Z-I-N-A. Where does Jim work? Um, I don't know off the top of my head either. Um, uh, we're also, um, we uh, had a committee meeting today for the Director of Innovation and Instruction um, Hiring Committee um, and reviewed applicants. And so we've set um, an interview date for next week. So we'll be interviewing candidates next week and hopefully getting someone on board. Um, I, th I think, you know, great discussion. And I think we've got some real qualified candidates and that always is good and bad because it makes it hard to um, find people. But um, also just with a lot of the stuff that's been going on, um, we are, um, schools are meeting um, and reviewing emergency plans um, and, as well as the SU just so that we can update those because we focused so much on, um, on COVID the last two years. We need to get back into just that normal planning. Um, and then um, we are um, finalizing stuff for summer programming and should have stuff out soon for families, um, you know, of the dates and, and themes and um, principals have been, and, and site coordinators have been contacting parents, um, you know, for recommendations. So that was just it. Just trying to update you guys on that stuff. So. Jack? All right. Yes, Deb. I am, um, that Andy had sent in an email that uh, about the MOA that because of the concerns over the board quorum that yep. the last SU meeting that we that the recommendation was to re-vote that item. That was 
out of clarity, that wasn't the recommendation. Okay. The recommendation from our legal was that this board, if it desired to take up that issue. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what, that's right, how it went. How it was, that's how it was phrased. Because of the confusion over the voting. So, right. for, um, uh, I, in anticipation of the issue, I will tell you what I learned and take this for what it's worth. That traditionally, uh, retroactive challenges to quorums are not allowed. However, the chair can determine that if there's obvious the, there's obvious non-quorum, the candidate following meeting uh, make a ruling on the matter. I personally think that the idea of confirming the MOA would be a a great thing to do, the concern I have to some extent is what happens if we fail to do that. But I'm willing to get a sense of the board as to whether they not want to review it. I will note that it's not on this agenda and I would want to have it be on a subsequent one so we can have the Roberts rules stuff and all the rest of whatever is required to be for you because this chair is going to make sure that you have documents and that you can make informed decisions if he does nothing else. So if, if with everyone's indulgence, I would like to move that to the next meeting uh, and, and have that discussion. Um, and in that, in that vein, 8A has as a new business for discussion action ratification of teachers' contracts. Now it has been past practice that we don't have substantive items on agendas during reorganization, but I know there's a sense of urgency about this. And I'm wondering, board members did get, I believe the, uh, the CBA and the, the uh, negotiated settlement page. Do, what is your pleasure? Do you wanna take this up tonight or do you feel that you need more time? Uh, just round robin informal inquiry. Okay, I, if I'm, I'm at the end of the table. So what I'm gonna say is that I would believe that some of this might wanna be taken up in executive session, possibly by some members. And, um, and I don't think that it would be appropriate necessarily to vote on it on the floor tonight. All That's right. my point. I've heard one, how about the, uh, anyone else having a view on this? Just a question, Jack. Is, yes. uh, is the is the SU board a signatory uh, on the contract? Uh, I believe it is, Jake, because of the, the we are the hirer of special ed personnel. Plus, we are the hirer of the uh, of the uh, of some specialty positions that are housed there as well, so, uh, such as the uh, speech therapy folks, etc. So. Uh, I believe we we get a vote and we're obligated to read that contract and to uh, have our yay or nay on it. The question is, are you ready to do that? Jack? Yes. Um, I think it's important that we do take it up tonight and that we right. we tonight. Um, the, the teacher's contracts are coming out, um, are due out to them. They have to be out to them before April 15th. Hmm. And if we keep putting things off, um, we're not going to be doing that. They have already ratified. Um, Rockingham has taken up the issue. Um, and this is the next board to meet and then the other boards so that we could get that decided before contracts come out. I, I hear you. Um, any you other had Go you ahead. Had questions? Go ahead. Well, you we have questions when you brought up the MOU from two of the board members that had their hands up, but I don't know oh, if they I'm sorry. that. Yeah, uh, well, let's slide back to the MOU question, then finish up with this. And then I, I agree with Deb that it should be probably exec session. All right. Um, we don't have an executive session on the on on this on this uh, agenda, uh, and normally I'd really like to make sure that we have executive sessions warned. Um, but yeah. that's my yeah. point of order. Yeah. Yes. Just giving you just asking point of order. Go ahead, Chris. Sessions are actually not supposed to be on the agenda at all. That was that was my 
You're no, you're not supposed to anticipate that there will be an executive session. However, a board can go into executive session for any item, such as negotiations, if it deems necessary. So there's there really should I don't know why executive sessions snuck their way back onto your agenda. So they shouldn't be there. You can do it, but it's the opposite of what you said. All right. Point taken. Thank you, Chris. Then uh, we don't need to have it. We, uh, we don't have to have that language about executive session anticipated. So but the item's on uh, the agenda. So yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, so, so back to two questions. Was there anyone else that had a view on on the delay of the MOU? Uh, and I see uh, your hand uh, up again. Just a question: Are you anticipating that discussion? Will the item be to ratify the decision? Ratify. The weather, ratify. Consider whether to put it back on the agenda. Is that it's sort of a two-step process. Is that what you're saying, or is it? Or do you just want to put it on the next? Well, I was anticipating putting it on the agenda, and people can always vote to pass it over and and not consider it further. So and next I'm meeting, just, I'm just trying to give everybody. There, there seems to be enough controversy about the issue that I wanted people to have an opportunity to talk about it if they wish to, and and if ratification made. Those who were uncomfortable about the about the vote the last time comfortable, I'm inclined to go there. Okay, so it would be on the third Wednesday yeah. next month. And, and I would be happy to entertain a motion at that time to pass it over and uh, be done with it, uh, if that's what people prefer to do. I I had a question, but it wasn't about the MOU, Jack. So. Go, right, go right ahead. Well, is it is it having to do with the Kitru contract or on something else, uh, Jake? Something else. It was, you know, nothing. Uh, and, and we went through our organization at Rockingham. Yep. Nothing's mentioned about Esser, the Esser committee. Okay. Right. Yeah. And and of course, there's almost no communication as far as my membership of the Rockingham board. And uh, I don't know if that's a, a, I don't know if that's a committee or if that's a, uh, a something else or, or or what it is. But I, I would, uh, I would as a board member, I would be curious to know what it is, and uh, and secondly to encourage whoever's on that and and the and the superintendent to provide regular updates to the boards when they meet. All right. Uh, well, uh, well, that subject because it's, uh, <laughs> it's a hell of a lot of money, and uh, I think the uh, you know it's something that people, yeah. not only the boards but the, the public, uh, should be kept abreast of. So. To to uh, to not to cut you off at all, Jake's, but uh, we do have a finance committee, and one of the reasons why it's finance as opposed to just budget is because this is part of our financial underpinnings. Uh, I think that's perfectly reasonable to have a ESSER presentation because not everybody is aware of the ESSER funds and we can have that on the agenda for the next meeting and have a, just a, a review of what that is and where we stand. And that would be, uh, that would be my preferred strategy for dealing with it. Um, so I want us to get back now because it was a bit out of order to uh, 8A, which is ratification of teacher contracts. Uh, the question before you all was whether or not you wanted to take this up tonight. Um, and Andy? I, I, I would encourage the board to take it up tonight. A little bit on what Priscilla was talking about with contracts coming out. What happened last year when the board decided to do the one and a half percent late in the year, contracts had already gone out. And so then new contracts had to be generated and re-signed and the business office ended up having to do twice as much work to get all the payroll done. So as, right. much, lead, as much lead time as we can have, given the state of the business office, and, and we, we've already talked about a plan 
So once the contract is ratified, we're going to have a plan to get to the teachers that, that this is when pay will come out. So they, they understand that. But as much time as we can have, I would greatly appreciate it. All right. Uh, if there's, is there any further discussion from any member on this or a question so that we can get to uh, a roll call on to take this up or not? Can I just add one thing, Zach? Yes, uh, absolutely. During my time as superintendent, we did have item business items on reorganization. Okay, I didn't that remember. Is, That's fine. Uh, it handed from board to board, but and I would echo what um, Andy said. I know the chaos that ensues when there's a new settlement in the business office, and, and the amount of time it takes to make all the changes because you're. There's a current year change. There's the upcoming contracts. And, and then it takes a long time just to roll the year over under the best of circumstances uh, at the end of June. So I think it really should be. I, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing a consensus that we should uh, vote to take this up. And just to save time, I'm going to do a quick Yay or nay? Shall we take this up? All in favor, say yay. 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 Any nays? Okay, so let's uh, continue on with 8A ratification of teacher contracts. I'll hear a motion to, uh, to vote in the affirmative to ratify the teacher contract, and then we can start talking about it. Do I have a motion to that effect? from anybody. Jack, I would move that we um, take a vote to ratify the teacher contract, but I think we need to discuss it in executive session. All right, I'm hearing a motion to go into executive discussion, uh, executive session to discuss this. Um, all in, no, that's fine. All in favor of doing that. Uh, and what would be the purpose? Because uh, Would it be because uh, the interests of, because it's a legal matter? It's a legal matter, and and contract. because um, okay. it's a contract issue that has not right. been approved by all the all boards, right. and because and it's not by all the boards, it's still open to not being an official contract. All right, well, it's a disadvantage. That's right, and to the disadvantage. That's the magic word. Um, all right, all in favor of going into executive dis uh, session to discuss this matter, say aye. 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 Any nays? <laughs> oh, and invite, and invite. Andy. 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 Thank you. And I'll take that as a retroactive friendly amendment because it's a small board. Um, so let's do that. We'll be taking action, I'm assuming, when we come out. So we're not that done with the meeting. anticipation. Thank you again. We're back. Uh, it is 749. And the item that we were discussing in executive session was ratification of teacher contracts. I will be looking for a motion to ratify the teacher contract, otherwise known as the CBA, uh, for for teachers uh, for the next three years. Uh, someone want to make a motion and preferably point of order? Yes, Jack. One before we actually get to the motion. I'm sorry. Um, technically, because you have people on Zoom voting and people here in the room voting, you're supposed to do a roll for each one. So everyone's name has to be called and then the vote taken that way. This is Just a money right. thing, I agree with that. Okay, so I, again, I'm gonna do the people who are voters who I can, I guess it's just Hardy and I are the only people that are remote who are voters here. So I've Hardy- Brenda. Oh, Brenda, Brenda, Brenda is a voter too. Brenda, would you like me to do a roll yeah. call for you guys? Would you mind, it would really help. And I will promise to try to be there in person going forward. We have a point of order first. Yes. The, the question, this is Cheryl, Jack. I just don't yeah. know whether we need to officially state that for the purposes of this motion, it will be a 12-person board, that it will be um, all voting members in Clinton, oh, Westminster. Uh, uh, yeah. I, hear that, I hear that as an appeal to the chair, and the answer is yes. Okay. All right. So and then, we'll I would love to make the motion. Yes. <laughs> so, so moved. <laughs> Consider it made. Um, and and uh, Andy, if you wouldn't mind doing the roll call for us. Hardy? Yes. Except. Lynn? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. Jiggs? Yes. 
Chris? Yes. Molly? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Deb? Aye. Cheryl? Yes. Karen? Yes. Jeff is absent. Uh, Jack? Yes. You have 11, 11 yeses and one absent. Mm -hmm. I'll declare that puppy carried then. Thank you all for the, the discussion and uh, and for a clear vote. And my apologies for uh, delaying it procedurally by asking about uh, whether we want to pick it up tonight. Uh, I see nothing under uh, old business for discussion action. As I said, uh, when it comes to the memorandum of agreement, we'll put that on for the next time around. And with that, we're to director's comments. Um, I, I'm going to uh, ask folks to go from uh, from the superintendent's left to right in the uh, room, because I don't know which that is. <laughs> and, uh, Mr. Kibbe. I'm all set. Thank you. Cheryl? Uh, welcome to the new board members, and uh, thank you. That's it for me tonight. Molly? Yes. Um, one of the things that I was glad to hear someone else ask for was the ESSER should be on everyone's agenda. Um, even if maybe somebody says in a meeting, you know, we haven't met, nothing's changed since last, last meeting. Um, I have worked um, harder than I did in the last couple of years on the agenda for the high school. And I've kind of, you know, everybody asked me to be the chair again. And um, hopefully I'm, you know, going to really make it so the next person that is at the chair really has a system in place. Um, ESSER is a lot of money. It's a lot of things that are going to happen if it if it all gets done and gets approved. And it, I, I think it's very important to have that on there. Um, negotiations. You know, negotiations are right now feels like they're almost complete. A lot of those things that we just pass by and we don't put on the agenda because we think the agenda is either too full or, you know, nobody wants to speak to it or, but we have a lot of committees and then all of a sudden in the middle of the year, it, you know, nobody knows what anybody's doing because we're not, you know, we're just, we're not reporting well. So I hope that we, we get this stuff on the agendas and we get a rep from, from these different committees. Um, I am going to ask the high school board members, either Brenda or Deb, to be the WNESU rep for the high school board. So when we come to that board, there's a report from for what happened at the SU meeting. Because, you know, we see the and very seldom do people actually log on and, and listen to this. But at the end of the year, they want to know, you know, what we've been doing. So and I just think it's important that we keep reporting back to our boards. And Mr. Hawes uh, mentioned it also, but, you know, it's kind of too bad the way the years of last couple of years have been. And I think that our kids have missed out on a lot of things where maybe we have been a huge um, gym full of people watching the banner be dropped for a state championship for a football team. Uh, those, those kids did a real good job and pushed through some some stuff that I'm really glad that my kid was in college by the time it came through because <laughs> I just can't imagine parents and kids, you know, getting through and then getting a state championship. I mean, that's just, we're just this little, little school and it, it's pretty neat to see. And I was very happy to see the board members that were able to, to come and, and watch that because, you know, the truth of the matter is those kids look up to us and um, we may not think so, but I heard a couple of parents say, look at that. Who's that over there? And, you know, I was able to say that's a school board member. Mm -hmm. And so that was pretty nice. So thank you everyone. And congratulations to the football team. Yeah. Let's keep going on. Yes. Yes. Well, so, um, I would like, I, I welcome the new members. It's great to see some, some turnover and some change of come. 
mindsets and those kinds of things. I'd like to see more transparency now. It's been almost two and three quarter years and we've been through two different business managers heading into a third, <coughs> a lot of problems. And the audit committee was based on the business systems and audit issues coming up and trying to deal with or trying to give some resolution to citizens who asked a lot of questions about the turmoil we've been in a couple of years ago. Um, so uh, moving forward, I'd like to see that we do all of our meetings appropriately that we and everything's transparent and we pay attention to our Roberts rules and open meeting law is very important. Um, so I'd like to see us follow those guys. And I know it's difficult when you've got 12 people. Now we have 12 people for a board. It's pretty sizable. So, but um, I'm, you know, I'm cheering on that we do a better job this year than we've done the last. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would echo welcome to anybody who's new and I'm looking forward to really a good year and a recovery period. We've had some really tough times and some tough changes with COVID. Um, I was pleased in the uh, in the uh, gym to mm -hmm. see that people were starting to feel a little more comfortable in interacting with each others and um, with the taking off of the masks and being a little bit more normal. Um, respecting those that continue to want to wear masks is important because some people are not ready for that yet and not able to um, adjust quite as quickly as some others. So we need to be very considerate of them and just be aware and continue with kindness to all because the kind act, I read it in one of the places I stopped when I was away, a kind act is something that goes on forever. So just keep up that kindness, people. Thank you. Yep. Uh, two things. Uh, one, um, the uh, uh, I'm very disappointed to see the statistics uh, from our schools in terms of the number of kids that are inoculated and boosted uh, against COVID. Because uh, you know you start taking off the mask, start meeting in groups, and you have over fifty percent of the kids uh, unvaccinated. We're going to have a continuing problem. So I, I can't urge enough. I know our teachers have done a great job in, in having themselves vaccinated, but we really need to work as each board uh, to uh, encourage uh, parents and children to get those inoc inoculations. Uh, the second item is I did speak at the Rockingham board on Monday night, critical of the negotiating process that went on in the teachers. I don't want to repeat a lot of stuff, but uh, I think that, uh, um, first of all, uh, having done this in the past and, and never wanting to do it again, <laughs> um, your, your superintendent has to lead the boards. Uh, the, the superintendent needs to provide the boards changes that he would like to see or she would like to see in the contract that would make the management of the enterprise uh, easier. Uh, I was told uh, that in this particular teacher's contract, we came to the table with and asked for basically nothing. Uh, I think that's a mistake. Second thing is, uh, and Mr. Kibbe is sitting here, he was the coach when I was <laughs> in the process. Uh, if you went into a session and the either you or the other side didn't modify your position, you were done, okay? And uh, I think that, again, I've heard uh, at the board uh, level that uh, meeting after meeting after meeting, there was no change in positions. And I think that, so the process should have gone to mediation a lot sooner. Uh, and uh, and the other thing was, I was surprised to see on that sheet that Cheryl uh, referred to, was that we agreed to monetary items before the big one. And I think that the um, uh, the uh, as a negotiating technique, uh, I really think that on monetary issues, it all should be done when they agree 
to the salary uh, increases. And uh, because I think it gives, it gives the board a little more negotiating room. Uh, when you give that up ahead of time, uh, there ought to be a quid pro quo. And uh, uh, I didn't see that. So I would, I would encourage the, the new group uh, that might have the same members uh, to uh, uh, consider how they approach it and, uh, and how they're led in the process. So thank you very much. All right, I'll go up on the screen. Karen. Well, it's always a pleasure to hear how our schools are managed. That's all I'm wanting to say. And uh, being a new person in the block, um, I'm learning a lot. Brenda? Yes, welcome to the new members. And I am looking forward to this uh, term, this season, because uh, we've gone through some changes and some uncomfortable times. And this is a time of transition. So looking forward to that. Pam. I'm just happy to be here um, and to contribute um, from my vantage point um, as a parent, as an educator, and as a board member. Thank you. Hardy. As a new member, I'm happy to be here. And uh, I have a lot to learn, like I'm sure all of the other new members do. So um, we're ready to move forward. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're last but not least. All right. A um, couple of quick points. One, uh, just to be clear, uh, it may not have made people feel happier about it, but we actually did come into the uh, negotiations with a bit of a laundry list of things we wanted to change. There was not a lot of consensus about some of them. And I think that the fact that we didn't carry many of them or really any of them forward is, is an issue. Uh, um, I would say beyond that, uh, I wanted to just speak briefly about the role of the chair. This may prompt a move, move to vacate the chair, but I wanted to let you know my thoughts about it. I think that the role of the chair is to keep uh, the conversation productive because uh, we focus on issues and don't get sidetracked. We can save uh, 10 minutes and I'm committed to uh, killing the four hour meeting on a permanent basis uh, to keep conversations informed. And that means to make sure you actually have packets like we used to in the old days. Chris Kibbe will remember when we did packets. Uh, we need to do that again. To keep conversations inclusive. Uh, often in these meetings, uh, we want to avoid having one or two people uh, dominate the meetings. And one of the great points of having me as chair is that I'm obliged to shut up. So I'll try to do that going forward. Uh, and uh, I, I will, however, call on members who uh, sit in the corner to ask for their opinion if they're not uh, ready to give one simply because I want everybody to be involved. Uh, we have a number of things that need to get cleaned up. We often are in reactive mode and I would like us not to do that going forward. Uh, we've mentioned ESSER, we've mentioned uh, the, the whole pro the financial oversight issues that we've occasionally neglected. Uh, we need a number of things. We need to have a yearly schedule so people know what we're going to be talking about. A lot of things that we discuss, we know six, nine months in advance. Um, you can't be in charge. You can't do, discharge your responsibility if you're only finding out what you're doing at the last moment. Um, we need to make sure that members, if they have issues, that they are presented uh, for consideration. And they may not be ones the chairs and favor of, but they'll be put on the agenda. Uh, we need to make certain that uh, all members' uh, priorities are represented in the discussions and no one is shut out. Um, we need to finish our negotiations and we need to do it soon. We need to revamp the articles under which this board governs. We suspended the rules 
uh, a couple of years ago, and it's led to unending confusion about who's even on the board and who can vote and what a quorum is and a whole lot of other things that frankly could be cleaned up if we revise our, uh, our uh, bylaws and we need to, to do that. Uh, and we need to have a long-term planning process. We need to keep our as much work, shove it to committees as humanly possible because people have better things to do than to discuss in detail all things. I assume we all trust each other and if we report stuff out, we can make decisions quickly. And like I said, it's 8.07 and we're gonna call this meeting to a conclusion, but I really wanna make certain that we set as close to a hard two hour limit as possible. Yeah, yeah, just a, um, we just need to set the next meeting date. Okay. The next meeting date will be that uh, proverbial second Wednesday. Third. Third. Third, excuse me? Third. First third, Wednesday. Third, thank you. Third. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jack, Jack, it's Chris. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. You need a teacher uh, roster approved, though. Yeah. So we're going to need to meet on the first. Uh, Which is the 6th of April. The 6th. Yeah. Okay. Thank you Sorry for that. To, Very good. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> April, April six at six thirty. That was a business item I sometimes included in the SU. Thank you very much for that, Chris. You're absolutely right. So uh, we'll meet on the six at six thirty. If you have agenda items, get them to me. ASAP because the last thing we want to avoid are last minute insertions because it just means nobody can actually discuss anything in an informed way. Um, uh, Sorry, Andy, last thing on that, we are posting on Thursday. So <laughs> like we, we have to post the Thursday before. The, the 31st of April. So, so we, I'm just, we're doing that as a regular yeah. so that we're always on time. So if people have agenda items, they should get them to you before that time. That's all. All right. So it's all on Wednesday. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, the, the one of just quick final point is one thing we want people to start thinking about is a retreat. We want to do it sooner rather than later. And boards that are aligned, like the elementary school boards, uh, boy, it'd be really nice if you guys can uh, at least have some of your meetings in common on the same night. I'm dedicated to cutting down the number of evenings Andy Haas has to do a long distance commute back to uh, his small hamlet in New, in New Hampshire. So be thinking about that, folks. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this guy. Oh. All right, all in favor, turn off your computers or walk out of the building.